My name is Shazad, and along with Prakash, we'll be doing our presentation on the business of cricket and how it evolved over the years. I will start things off by explaining the development of cricket. The exact time cricket was introduced is not known. However, however it, has, it is believed to have been in the Norman Saxon era, where young children used to play on the streets. In 1611, cricket was noted as a boys' game. However, that changed after the English Civil War, where it became known as more of an adult sport. In the 18th century, Rules and regulations were introduced into cricket. So how the sport was played, how a team could win, and the type of equipment needed were all part of these new rules and regulations. The next part will be covered by Prakash. There are currently three formats of the game. A test match, a one-day match, and a T20 match. This has been done to encourage our young children to participate in the sport more as they may feel that the longest version of the game, which is a test match, which lasts over five days, maybe too time consuming. Not only has the format changed, but the, um, but the introduction of technology, such as the DRS system, has improved decision making in the, within the sport. I'll be looking at the commercialization within cricket. Cricket is contested by county and international teams alike, so therefore generating profit is not a problem. However, any money that is generated from cricket is actually reinvested back into the sport. The money is used to pay off player and staff wages, wages, and any money that is left over is actually contributed towards improving the stadium and um, improving the facilities that the players use. Grassroots cricket is important to the development of cricket, of sorry, young players, as it helps to nurture young talent and develop them into better players. Other sporting teams have stakeholders, but in, within cricket, the stakeholders don't receive a dividend payment at, at the end of each year. On the other hand, state on in cricket, the stakeholders are actually audiences and players who actually invest within the sport. In 2010, the ECB, which is the English Wales Cricket Board, had a turnover of £106,036. After all expenses, i.e. player wages and ground upkeep, they, had, they came to a loss of £500 before tax. In 2009, the turnover's figures were £114,462. After all expenditure, there became a profit of £968 before tax. In England, the ECB are the highest board that all county teams must answer to. All individual teams have a board of directors who ensure that all rules are abided by. If a law was to be broken at any time, the player would first report to the county board, depending on the severity of the crime. As for leagues, there are nine test playing nations who constantly travel the world competing against each other in all three formats of the game. As for the English county, there are two divisions that play four-day cricket, known as first-class cricket. And um, for the short version of the game, teams are split into regions. I'll be looking at the final topic within our presentation, and that is current issues within cricket. There has been one long-standing long issue within cricket, and that is of match fixing. In 2010, in a test match against England, three Pakistani players were accused of spot fixing. They were told to deliver balls, ball, no ball, for which they were rewarded for a particular sum of payment. That's not the only case. The recent case that has been brought into the spotlight is former Essex player Mervyn Westfield, who was accused of spot fixing. He was told to bowl an over which went for a particular amount of runs. Match fixing, match fixing has ruined the, the reputation of cricket and has ruined the game for viewers. Immediate action has already been taken, which is a plus point, and thus all four of these players have been jailed and have been given life bans from the sport. Thank you for watching, and we hope you enjoy your presentation.